Hey folks, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today's video is brought to you by the Ansel MR500 Diagnostic Tool. It's designed specifically for Yamaha and Suzuki outboard motors to clear and check any fault codes that you have. It will also do live stream data while it's running. So if you want to save time and money on diagnostics, check out the link in the description and use my discount code. Today we're going to get into some diagnostics on an older carbureted motor that you've seen me do many times before, but we're going to get deeper and deeper into newer outboards using the same old school technology and diagnostics with feel, touch, measurements, as well as understanding the operation, but in the newer four strokes we're going to need diagnostic tools to help us guide. So check out this video and check out coming soon we're going to review the full diagnostic MR500 tool. Stay tuned. At first glance, beautiful boat, nice cover, clean motor. The rest of the fiberglass around the sides look really clean. The trailer looks really clean. It looks like it has newer tires on it. The guy did say he went through the bearings and everything. The brake system is shuttering on him, he says. So typical brake systems, I never got more than two, maybe three years without having to pull them apart, clean them out you know, kind of either rebuild them or relube them. They just seem to get very um, corroded up from dumping in the salt water. So there are a lot of maintenance and sometimes you have to replace those parts. So that may be just typical maintenance. But let's take a look at this motor first. Let's start with the basics. We are gonna do a compression check, but since we have it kicked up here, let me get a little pan and let's take that lower unit drain plug out and see what's inside. Looks like we're in neutral, I believe, yes. Now I can take a look, I can hold my screwdriver here and see if the prop shaft is bent. If I hold it, and I'll show you how I do this, and we can see if the prop shaft is bent, and it looks pretty straight. Although the prop got a really bad ding there. Let's see what we have inside here. Looks like all oil. I don't have any water coming out, which is good. So that's a good start. We'll take a little closer look at this power tilt and trim. As we come in here, checking out our power tilt and trim, we're looking at, I don't see any oil here. I do see the wiper seal up here is starting to lift up. So it's not causing any problems, not leaking right now. We can feel the shafts, see if there's any nicks in them, and I think it would be leaking if there was. And there is some corrosion, but typical for this age motor. Nothing out of the ordinary. Looking up further, I don't see any major corrosion up here. I still see a good nut on there and still painted on there. So, not bad to start with. It's always a good idea. I like to keep some extra, extra drop cloths around because Number one, I don't want to make a mess on, on his boat, but also I'm going to be in and out and in and out, you know, back and forth and just keeps it cleaner. Uh, although this is, and, and of course this is a nice clean boat. I do have some faded fiberglass back here. Looks like wherever it sat, this got the sun because uh, the rest looks pretty nice and blue. So let's get the cover off the rest of the way. So battery must be off. Yep. He has a transom saver here, which is handy to have. Helps keep it from ruining your transom. Put that aside. And now let's tilt her down and get the cover off. He has a few parts here that he disconnected. So this is a 60 degree motor. It has uh, an eye here that sees for timing and spark and everything. Voltage regular up here. Looks nice and clean inside here. 
but you know we're always going to start off with a compression check and while we're doing a compression check we're going to do a spark check is typically what i do and it's in my guide so let's get these spark plugs out i do see something disconnected here so we're going to go through and, and check everything here because he said it was running and then it quit running and I believe he said the last time he was out he couldn't get it running he had to get towed back in and when he came back he only had spark on half the cylinders so I have to do a little bit of research too because we'll have to do a little diagnostic today but we want to start with that compression check to make sure the engine is the internal engine is okay before we jump off any bridges trying to make any other repairs so let's get these spark plugs out we'll get our compression tester ready to go and we'll do a compression check so I'm also going to be inspecting my spark plugs as I take them out. I'm going to get a rag to put on here. I don't want any oiliness on his on the white parts of his boat. He mentioned something about the shifter shift switch too. Oh, that's disconnected right now. He's got that pulled off. And that's the other side of this. So that's what he's got disconnected right now. So we're going to have to kind of take a step by step here and see what we find. Looks like a nice burn. Yeah. yeah. If they all look like that, that's pretty good. These opt optical ignition systems are sometimes can be a little tricky. And I know a lot of guys like to use CDI aftermarket parts too. Uh, I didn't tell Mike, but I think I have some, some parts in my shop here left over from another motor. Might have a power pack and some coils to do some tests. Really, diagnostics on this, you know, newer motors you can hook up a computer to. I don't know if any of you have heard of the Ansel MR500. I'm going to be doing some tests with one of those on Suzuki and, and uh, Yamaha. Uh, they do make one, or they're coming out with one for... Mercury as well. So I think this is the side starboard side he said was not firing. So let's see. And I think this switch blocks off half of that. Now this one's all black. Let me show you the difference between the two. Not crazy difference, but it's definitely uh, richer on that side. Or that one cylinder anyway this one's a little more like the others that one looks more like the others now i'm going to go ahead and plug this back in and connect this back up properly took it out of the clip we're going to have to take the side covers off to make that work so we're going to try it with and without but let's get the compression check done first we'll start with the bottom cylinders and i think should I get myself a jumper wire so I don't have to keep climbing up inside the boat each time? Or what? Also want to put these spark plugs back in so I can check sparkage while we crank it over. So if you're interested in all the details of how to do a compression check, you can watch. I have a couple of different videos on it. So I don't want to bore you with this one when you can watch that process by itself. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do this compression spark check and let you know how it goes. All right, beautiful, bright, sunshiny day, which makes everything hot. So what I do is I have a little key here um, that I have jumped out and a little plug we're going to hook up so that I can do my compression test right here. So we'll get that plugged in and crank it over. Okay, compression chest is good. We're going to, you know, it has a little off here and there, but not beyond that 10%. My lowest is 105, my highest is 115. So we're still within that 10%. So I'm going to go ahead and get my camera out, and I'm going to go ahead and, and scope these cylinders just to take a look inside and see what it looks like. Everything was sparking. I know he said he didn't have spark on one side. With this switch either connected or disconnected, it didn't matter. I had sparking the, uh, on every single plug. Now I'm going to get my spark jump tester as well to make sure it jumps a, a bigger arc maybe he wasn't jumping a bigger arc but typically that's not the issue it's usually not a weak spark that causes the engine not to run at all 
Um, but it is a possibility, so we're going to rule that out as well. So let me get my camera. We'll check inside these cylinders next. So what to do next? I have spark on all cylinders. I have good compression. We scoped each cylinder. Looks to me like this motor was either rebuilt or very, very low hours because I still see hash marks all over the cylinder walls. Tops of the pistons are clean. I see OMC on the top of the piston. So I don't think it's been a total rebuild. Maybe somebody pulled the heads off and just worked a hone in there, but it doesn't look like it. It goes all the way down to the bottom where the piston is. So uh, right now I'm not seeing anything major that's jumping out at me. Now the only thing we haven't tested is fuel, so that's probably what we'll do next. We'll disconnect this fuel line, pump some out into a jar and see what it looks like. So we pump some fuel out into a jar. We're gonna let that sit for a couple of hours, let it settle out, but it looked pretty clean like apple juice when it came out. So at this point, if he's having trouble that way, I wanna fire this motor up and see what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze up that squeeze ball and get my hose out here, we'll hook it up. I'm gonna move my camera out of the way so I don't get it all wet because it'll splash all over. And let's fire this up and see what it does. So I'm gonna squeeze up my primer bulb and I'm gonna look very closely. Even though we're in nice, nice direct sunlight on the other side of the motor, I'm not in the sunlight, so I got my little flashlight. I'm gonna be squeezing that ball hard and looking to see if there's any fuel leaks. So not seeing any fuel leaks, that's a good sign. I do know that the bowls of these carburetors can develop cracks over time. I didn't see anything obvious. Sometimes they're on the outside, sometimes they're around the backside where the motor gets hot, where they would crack. Only way to check that would be to pull them all apart. But instead, let's fire this up first and see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. This really needs to be on here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the water off and put that on. Sometimes the sunlight can affect that eye. So let me get that on there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the motor cover on instead. I will run it again later when the sun gets out of the way, but I don't want the sunlight directly on that. All right, turn my water back on. Sounds nice. It sounds like a two stroke. Maybe it has a little miss. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. So Mike, hmm, this is probably gonna bother you even more because you had problems. I wonder, did you have the top off when you weren't getting spark and maybe the sunlight was getting in there on the eye? Uh, I'd really like to get this out on the water. Um, hmm, maybe there's just something that's uh, not happening right. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. What do you think's going on with this motor? How did he run it and then couldn't get it started again? Uh, I don't know, but I would like to run it upstream in the river and maybe have a buddy who's out on the water at the same time just in case you have an issue. Now that's a tricky thing to do to find a buddy that can, you know, spend a Saturday with you to make sure your boat's running okay. So I think that's a good idea. Um, I'm going to continue to go through some more checks on this motor in our next episode and see what else. But man, it kicked right over. Now I did prime it a little bit here. I also pushed the key in and it kicked right over. I uh, haven't seen anything else wrong. He has a little miss to it, but it's a two-stroke. They never really run smooth. So let me know what your thoughts are. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And we we'll look forward to seeing you out on the water. Have a great day.